Hello, I'm Ronnie from the blog, Our High Street Home. And today I wanted to share with you a little project I just finished. About a year ago, we had a free roadside find. It was a little love seat. Uh, the fabric was completely intact, but very faded in sections. So it had a lot of uneven color. So I brought it home, not sure what I was going to do with it or where I was going to use it, or even if I was going to keep it, but it was free. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I did update the upholstery without having it reupholstered and without using chalk paint. I um, painted the frame since the frame was already painted and I did a glazing technique on it. All of the steps were really easy. It didn't take long and it now sits in my sunroom. So I'll be showing you a few pictures. I also have this little couch on my blog, our high street home. If you'd like to see how I completed this project from start to finish, Please keep watching. So here's how this couch started off. It was in beautiful condition. The frame is painted white and there was some chipping on it, but as you can see, all the fabric is intact. There were some stains here and there, but nothing major to deal with. And as you can see, it is a really good piece of furniture. So I started out with my wet dry vac and gave it a really good vacuum. Now, I really did like the color of this couch, and it is a bit hard to tell in this video, but some of the fabric was faded almost to a light gray, where other portions of the fabric were almost a silver blue. So the coloring was really inconsistent on the entire piece. When the vacuuming was finished, I gave the whole couch a really good shampoo and cleaning with my Bissell. This is one of my favorite cleaning tools. I have the one that does carpets and has this attachment I can do my furniture with as well. To clean the frame, I just used good old Dawn dish soap and then I rinsed it real good with plain water. So these are the three colors I combined to get the color that you will see my final color on this couch. I decided to go with fabric dye because I just couldn't bring myself to put chalk paint on fabric. I figured if the dye didn't work, I could always try the chalk paint. This piece was free, so it was a good piece to experiment on. But once I had gotten the color mixture that I wanted with the RIT dye, I just used a stiff paintbrush to really work the color into the fabric. I also used um, a squirt bottle with water in it to pre-wet my fabric. And I used another squirt bottle with some of the dye in it as well to get help get into the deeper creases. So you see here first I was wetting the fabric down. It seemed to really help the dye absorb right into the fabric instead of sitting on top of it.
Now some portions of this couch were faded so to such a light color, I only used one treatment of dye on some of those areas. Some of the areas I did a double treatment on, like the cushions you sit on, I did double treatments on. But these parts that were underneath the cushions, I just did one treatment. As I made my way through this project, I found the best coverage was achieved with both squirting the dye on and using this really stiff brush. The fabric on the back of this couch picked up the color so well I only needed to do one treatment. So this is what the dried front of the couch looked like after one treatment.
After my couch was dry, the fabric was a bit stiff, so I used a sanding block and just roughed up all the fibers. It made it nice and soft again. I even resorted to using one of those hand scrubbers. You fill the handle with cleaner. This is a clean one. I got it from uh, Dollar General and uh, roughed up the fabric with one of these. I couldn't find my sanding block at one point and it worked just fine. In fact, it's a little bit easier to hold on to. So I decided to paint the wood because it had already been painted and I did not want to use stripper all around the fabric that I had just applied dye to. So what I did was I sanded off all the parts that were already peeling and tried to smooth them out as much as possible. And then I taped off all the fabric so I had no chance of getting paint on any of the fabric I had just dyed. And I came in with a kind of a neutral brown. Um, this is a bear paint. It's called um, Outdoor Cafe. And I gave the entire frame two good coats of this for really even coverage. This frame did have some nice detailing on it which was kind of hard to get into with a regular brush so I did end up using just a little artist brush to get into all the nooks and crannies. To give the appearance of a wood finish on the, the frame, I then used um, Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze, and it's an easy process. I've done it on a few other pieces. It's just painting the glaze on after you give it a really good mix, and let it sit for a few moments, and then you just lightly 
wipe it back with a cloth. Once it's dry, if you decide you want your treatment to be darker, you can just apply as many treatments as you'd like. A lot of different companies make this decorative glaze, but the only one I've ever used is the Rust-Oleum, and I really like it. Sometimes I do put a little glaze on um, the cloth I'm wiping with just so it slides easier across the treated areas. It doesn't pull back as much if I already have some on my cloth. I did do two treatments on this frame. thing you want to watch out for with glaze is that you don't get drips but it's nice because you don't have to worry about even color because what you're trying to do is create uneven color and this is a second treatment going on the next day so you can see it's a little bit darker now It really brings in a lot of dimension and character. You're able now to see a lot of the detail that you couldn't see before the glaze was applied to the frame surface. I liked what I achieved after two treatments and this is what I stuck with. So to make sure our fabric color stays and doesn't fade and doesn't transfer, you want to use the RIT fixative and my squirt bottle nozzle fit on the RIT bottle so I ended up using two bottles of this RIT and I saturated the fabric very well and again put fans on it overnight to dry it really well. One other thing I will probably do is give the entire couch a treatment of Scotch Guard. That will help with any possible stains um, and fading, just to give it that much more protection. So I wanted to give you a breakdown and a little recap of the products I used. It was a combination of these RIT fabric dyes. I did a treatment of the RIT Color Stay dye fixative. I used a couple squirt bottles. I used this paint and primer in the color Outdoor Cafe. I used Rust-Oleum Decorative Glaze, as you can see, well used. And what I didn't end up filming was I put a layer of this polyurethane all over the frame of the couch once the glaze was dry. Here is a look at my final project. 
I will be putting up a blog post about this project. If you'd like more information on it, that should be up in a couple days. Please feel free to ask any questions if you have any. And if you liked this project and you liked this video, please like and subscribe.